Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, I want to bring to you the January Skincare Bulletin. Once every couple of months, I like to film a video like this, which captures all of the new stories going on in the skincare world that might not be big enough to warrant a standalone video in their own right, but are definitely worth reporting on. I'm the sort of person that always likes to be on top of the gossip, ahead of the curve when it comes to any trends, and that's kind of what this video is designed to do. We've got a lot to talk about in today's video. We've got some new product launches, we've got some skincare influencer collaborations, some hot new skincare skincare trends and a couple of brand closures. So without further ado, shall we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in? If you guys want to see this continue as a regular feature here on the channel, let me know by reaching down and giving this video a big thumbs up and a like. I've really enjoyed filming this style of content over the past year, but of course I always want to create the videos that you guys enjoy watching. By giving that video a like, it's honestly the best way of helping me to understand what is and isn't enjoyed by you guys. Now first up, should we talk a new product launch? From one of my absolute favorite brands, and it's this. This is the Ordinary Multipeptide Eye Serum. This comes hot on the release of the Ordinary Glucoside Foaming Cleanser. Um, and I feel like we've waited a whole long time for some new launches by the Ordinary. And like buses, they've all come at once. We've had these two new recent launches, and there's another three in the pipeline between now and June. So the Ordinary is certainly churning out those products, but are they actually any good? Well, the Glucoside Foaming Cleanser, 10 out of 10. Honestly, one of the best cleansers I've tried this year, and I feel featured it in my 10 out of 10 skincare video, which I'm going to leave a link to up there. Check that out if you want to see that in action, but also want to see some of the other like best rated skincare products of last year. When it comes to the Ordinary Multipeptide Eye Serum, I'd say that my views are a little bit more mixed. I actually covered them in far more detail in a full review of this product, which I'll leave a link to up there if you did want to check it out, like understand the ingredients in more detail and how it applies. But I think if I was to summarize, I like the formulation, four different peptides, some are going to have anti-aging benefits, others are there to calm, soothe and hydrate. You've got some caffeine to depuff. You've got some really nice calming and soothing agents alongside those peptides. A touch of niacinamide, which is going to brighten the under eye area. However, I think $25, £20 for 15 mil product is quite a lot, especially when you think this is single-handedly the most expensive product in the Ordinary collection, but I think the Ordinary Buffet with Copper Peptides actually has advanced technology, which is quite expensive and kind of justifies that higher price point. I'm, I'm struggling to say this is value for money, which is the one caveat I would have with this. Do you have to reach for a $25 eye serum? Absolutely not. There are some other options on the market. If you want to try it, I think you'll be impressed with the results that you get, but that price point just makes you feel a little uneasy, and I wish the Ordinary would stick more to their drugstore core values that they're known and loved for. Now, keeping with like the Decium family of brands, but moving over to Hylamide. Now, Hylamide was a skincare brand I adored and used very frequently in my skincare routine. But around a year ago, Decium, which is the parent company of Hylamide, The Ordinary, Neod, they announced that they were discontinuing the entire Hylamide line. They would sell the stock that they already had created and then gone, never to be seen again. Now, I know a lot of us kind of went into a bit of a panic and decided to buy as much of the Hylamide stock as we could because we didn't want to be without the products. Well, a year later, and they've just announced a restock of the whole Hylamide line in the North American and the European markets. This leaves me feeling completely confused, and I feel like almost like a little bit manipulated. Now, Hylamide products, my favourite being this, the Sub-Q skin. I also love the Sub-Q eyes, the Sub-Q mist. The whole Sub-Q line was just amazing. Well, these have a 12-month use-by date on them. So, 12 months ago when they made their announcement, the products that they've now just restocked with won't have been manufactured. So, if you're closing a brand, discontinue it. Why are you continuing to manufacture products after that use-by date and restock your web shop like 12 months later? I feel a little bit of me feels like something is a bit disjointed here, and I have a theory. I suspect that actually they were hoping a lot of people that loved Hylamite, myself included, would just swap to the Ordinary and Neod. So, that way they could do away with their least popular of the three core lines and not lose any sales because people would just transfer over to one of the other brands. In truth, I don't think many people have actually made that switch. And maybe Desi is having second thoughts about discontinuing Hylamide. I would not be surprised if in the next two or three months we kind of have that about face and they say, actually, it's back by popular demand. We're not discontinuing it anymore. You guys will still be able to get your hands on Hylamide. I kind of see that's the direction that they're going in. I might be wrong and I have no insider knowledge on this, but that, that's just how it feels. I am really disappointed that they've gone down this route. I feel just, I don't know, it all seems a little shady to me, but I am never one to miss out on really good skincare. And honestly, I think it's really hard to beat the Hylamide Sub-Q skin, mist and eyes. And so I would say, if you love Hylamide as much as I do, 
just put all that to one side, stock up while you can. While this product inventory actually exists on the web stores, get some in your basket if you love the brand. And the best thing about it is the Decium 50 code actually gives you 50% off the whole thing. So the links are in the description box below, as is that code. Use those links, put that code in, and you'll get 50% off any product from Hylamite. So you know what? We can stock up on some of our favorite products with a 50% discount, but just something in my mind tells me, I think this is a brand that might be making a reappearance in the next couple of months. One brand that is definitely not coming back is Morphe. So Morphe is probably best known for their influencer collaborations on different makeup lines, but they also had a really popular skincare line too. They pitch very much at like the 20 to 30 age demographic and bracket, and they'd be really successful doing it. Well, Morphe out of the blue announced that they were closing all of their physical retail outlets and that they were gonna be reining in some of their online sales presence too. This left a lot of people shocked. I mean, everyone knew that they were going through some financial difficulties difficulties in the past and that maybe the brand might not be there in the long term but to just turn around and say yeah all our stores are closed I think this took the whole world by surprise in terms of the skincare I don't think anything is lost you know what Morphe was nothing spectacular you can get the same skincare products at a fraction of the cost at the drugstore like nothing to see here and that might have been part of the problem however my heart does go out to all the people the employees that have been caught up in this because if you read some of the news articles surrounding this it seems that a lot of the employees actually found that they lost their jobs through the media outlets or literally like half an hour before it went public. This this isn't the way to do things. And I think it's left a lot of people that were still fans of Morphe feeling a bit mert towards the brand. So like I say, my heart goes out to anyone impacted by this. But I think in terms of the skincare, I don't think there's anything really to miss out on here. Go to the drugstore, you can get something just as good, if not better, at a fraction of the cost. The main issue with Morphe is they really hitched themselves to a lot of problematic influencers. They certainly brought in the coins, the likes of Jeffree Star, who has a very checkered past, James Charles that had a lot of issues with his online presence like a year, year and a half ago, and Jacqueline Hill, who can't successfully launch a product to save her life when the lipsticks came with like bits of hair and fluff in them. Then she had the other product that just didn't work, and it was called the Vault Collection. And all of this kind of fed into the idea that this isn't really the good guy brand that they want to believe they were. Now, these influencers definitely got those cash registers ringing, but it kind of all came back to bite Morphe when the problematic behavior just kept continuing. And so they were forced to drop a lot of these influencers. I know they let James Charles go, they let Jeffree Star go. And with that came an awful lot of cost pressures, which just added to all of the problems. The way that Morphe behaved too wasn't that great either because when the Jacqueline Hill vault collection kind of failed, they released it and lots of influencers tried it and were like, no, this is garbage. This formulation is terrible, literally doesn't work. They recalled everything and then within two weeks they said, ah, oh, we've repressed it all, ready to go out to everyone again, totally new product, you'll love it. And it turns out it wasn't. It was the same old stock that they just stuck a new batch code on or something. Shady, shady, shady gone for good by the looks of it and honestly nothing to lose when it comes to the skincare but I definitely think we should be mindful and respectful of those employees that have been impacted by the physical store closures mm -hmm. but I think this is a lesson in saying you know be careful who you hitch yourself to in terms of online celebrities and personalities because that can bring in some great profits but in the long run it can actually do more harm than good. Now one influencer collaboration I am definitely definitely excited for in fact I am thrilled beyond belief for is the glow by Ramon and beauty of Joson Sun Stick. I am so thrilled for Ramon. He's one of the nicest, nicest guys in the skincare space. I've loved his channel and his content for the longest possible time. In fact, if you haven't checked it out, I'll leave a link to his videos in the description box below. His editing style is just so fun and uplifting. And he uses his science background to really break down the technology behind sunscreens, talks about the application, how they lay on the skin, the finish that you're gonna see, all of that good stuff. And I really, really do trust his value and his opinion when it comes to sunscreens. So this seems like a very natural collaboration. I think sometimes in the past we've had Skinfluencer or just general influencer collaborations and they've come a bit left field. You know, someone's promoting a new credit card or someone's doing a makeup line when they're primarily skincare or they've got a new app or a game or something. You think, what is all that about? That just screams cash grab. So it's really nice when I see an influencer collaboration that really is within their niche, within their field. Ramon knows so much about sunscreen. I think he describes 
describes himself as a sunscreen enthusiast or something like that. He's very passionate about sunscreens and finding the right ones. He also loves Korean skincare and beauty of Joseon. So this just seems like the perfect, perfect collaboration. I cannot wait to get my hands on this sun stick and I will be doing a full review, putting it through its paces. I have very high hopes for this. I just know it's going to make a wonderful addition to our skincare routine and I'm very, very excited about that. So let me know your thoughts, feelings and opinions on that in the comment section below. Are you going to be buying it? Are you looking out for it? What are your thoughts? Now, finally, let's talk about a new hot skincare trend. I said there'd be some new trend data in this video and unfortunately, this isn't a trend I particularly want to get on board with. Of course, it comes courtesy of TikTok like a lot of skincare trends at the moment do and it's called laminated skin. So laminated skin is like the morning equivalent of slugging. Slugging is where you put a thick layer of usually like Vaseline on top of your skincare routine, go to bed and you're supposed to wake up with gorgeous, smooth and hydrated skin. It's a little bit greasy on application, but you're supposed to get that glow up you crave. Well, laminated skin is doing that, but in the morning. You put a lot of hydrating products into your skincare routine, toners, creams, multiple toners on top of each other. Then you layer it on with a really thick occlusive and it's designed to give you that laminated, dewy, glowy look. Now, I watched a video by Cassandra Bankshan where she described this, and this is how it's kind of designed to be portrayed as a trend, of giving that skin that looks moist or even sweaty to the touch. Why do we want to look moist? Ask yourself this, why do you want to look moist? I'm all for hydrated, I'm all for dewy, I'm all for glowy. Moist and sweaty to the touch, no, no. Also, you don't need to buy skincare for this, just go to the gym. This is what I look like after I've done a workout for like 10 minutes, I'm really unfit. Do a 10 minute workout and this is what I look like. It's not a look I want to carry forward for the rest of the day and it just feels a bit gross. Now, to be fair to Cassandra Maxson in that video where she was talking about it, she was just trying it out. Lots of other people have been fangirling about it. She was giving more like an independent review of it and said, if you've got oily acne prone skin, go nowhere near this. And I would definitely echo that. But I think even if you've got a dry skin type, why do you want to look moist all day long? You don't, it, uh, just no. I think this is a trend that's gonna disappear as quickly as it arrived, and I'm very thankful for that. If you want to get really nice, plump, juicy, dewy skin, you can absolutely achieve that by increasing you know, the amount of hydrating products. Get a nice Seeker serum, get a nice hydrating toner, but don't seal everything in so you look sweaty throughout the day, because this is just gonna clog your pores, it's gonna exacerbate any skin issues that you have, and whilst you might get that short-term fix, I think in the long term, this could be a whole hot mess. So no, laminated skin, I don't think it's for me. And I would say think twice before jumping on this trend. So there you have it guys, five new stories that might have just slipped under the wire a little bit, but I wanted to bring to you in this video. Sound up in the comment section below with any of your thoughts, feelings, and opinions related to any of this. And wherever you are in the world guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care, bye.